YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We're gonna unbox this thing, but I got this thing just as a reminder because we just recently released some footage with the new Ultra Micro Consendo, the Ultra Micro Extreme, and it really is extreme on 3S. Uh, at some point, I believe they might have this working on 2S as well, but most people are gonna fly on 3S. And that reminded me that I loved the 1.5 meter Concendo. And so we're gonna do it again. And we're gonna make sure to do a promise for you on this one. When we did this the first time, we didn't know about the flap rounds or how to do it. And we didn't wanna dig into it because I thought I was gonna cut in inboard flaps. Well, as you know, there was the fancy stick maneuver you can do to actually get flap rounds on this. And so I said, hey, that reminds me, I never actually did the flap rounds on our Concendo. So we're gonna do that tonight. And so that's gonna be part of our unbox build radio setup that we're gonna open up right now. The 1.5, something you've probably seen before. And if you haven't seen it, and you wanna see our first go around with this plane, be my guest. It'll be in the playlist for the Concendo. All you have to do is check our playlist on brianphillipsrc.com, or you can just wait till the end. We should have a playlist that pops up at the end on one of the shortcuts. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna open this thing up. One of my favorite sailplanes that you can get. Oh yeah, the Concendo Evo. If you've never experienced a Concendo Evo and you don't wanna just do the small one, this thing is amazing. And you will really like it. It's a 1.5 meter size class, which is pretty good size. And uh, this thing basically comes equipped with AS3X and safe. So it's very similar to this, only you're gonna fly on bigger batteries and you're gonna have a bigger experience. And this thing screams louder, which is really cool. And so if you guys have never had a sailplane that is extreme, this thing will get your whistle wet for sure. Now keep in mind, this is the third version that I have personally had. Excuse me, this will be the fourth version that was released because there was a Concendo S, which was a safe equipped. So it had full safe with beginner mode, intermediate mode, and experience mode. This is just gonna have safe select built in, okay? Uh, so if you're a beginner, that is not available and you wouldn't need it anyway because this is gonna do everything that did. And then you can still set up a panic mode if you really care, but I think panic is overrated. I just prefer to have an auto leveling mode and AS3X for a beginner, okay? I think panic is just one other layer that kind of complicates things. It doesn't need to be there. And you waste an extra channel on that, okay? So it increases the cost. We're gonna show you all this stuff. The second one that came out was the Concendo Advanced, which was blue and white, okay? Mm -hmm. So instead of being yellow, predominantly in white, it was blue and white. The first one was red and white. And now this is the Evo, the Concendo Evo, which brought us from, originally it was a 2S platform, then it went to a 2 and 3S platform on the Advanced, and now we're at 3 and 4S, which is great. So you can actually go fast with this plane. That being said, somebody probably thought, hey, we don't need to go fast at the sailplane on the original, and back then, I'm telling you, the only thing that was better about that is you could crash it and you had a little better chance of not breaking something, okay? Because it was a softer, more rubbery, more wiggly foam, okay? So even this Ultra Micro has the more firm foam on it, which is the only thing I warn you about if you're brand new to the hobby is that yes, you can break this stuff and it's not super, super hard to do. Now this, foam is gonna be a little bit different than that and we'll show you the differences. But basically when you get into EPS compared to EPO, and by the way, if you guys see this stand, that's something that my son and I have been working on uh, with regard to a 3D printer to get some engineering done and we're gonna come up with some cool solutions because I have a ton of UMX planes just like I have a ton of big planes and I like to store these little planes on top of my shelves, you can see over my shoulder here, mm -hmm. and those are just crappy little stands that I made, but this is gonna give us an answer to having a bunch of planes in a really tight spot. So keep an eye out for the video where we show some details about that. And if you have questions about that, hit us up in the comments below. There may be something that we're offering for sale. I'm just not sure how quick that might happen. So don't hold your breath. It might take us a few more weeks to get it done. My son and I have been working through 
some prototyping on that. So here we go, we've got some decals. These are gonna be the stickers that go on the bottom of the wing. Uh, they're super easy to install. And these are not wacky decals, they're just stickers, sticker decals. And high visibility is very critical. You wanna be able to differentiate the top from the bottom on these sailplanes, very important. Okay, and I'm not sure why I left this out, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing tucked away. You're supposed to put it on the stove. I'm supposed to put it on the stove because we have to have our flammables on top of the yeah. gas stove. That's People the way it works. People would be really concerned if you didn't. That's right, here we go. Let's put it right here. Is that good enough? Yeah. Okay, great. So guys, without further ado, we're gonna keep unboxing this. We do this the same way all the time with almost every plane. Look at what they did with the prop. Is that not weird? It's like, it's like stabbed in into the, the phone. phone. That's, I don't think that's supposed to be that way. But one of the things we like most about E-Flight, not the only thing, but just one of the big ticket items is that they have really good manuals, okay? Mm -hmm. And this one happens to not be folded. So good job, E-Flight. We rarely get a folded manual on an E-Flight plane. But one of the things we like about E-Flight is the consistency of manuals. Now they have recently upgraded the manuals. I'm not sure if this one's been upgraded but I know that there is a page that we really like. It looks like on the, yeah, see this is DX. So yeah, so my guess mm -hmm. is this one is an older style, older style manual. But the thing is, even on the older style manuals, you just get good information. It makes it easy to set up 57 to 71 millimeters. That's Pretty such a specific. weird range. Yep. Um, I'm just glad they didn't do plus or minus. That makes me feel good. That's true, then no math. Yep, that's right. Okay, so we'll go over all this anyway, so no need to actually have a manual if you're watching a Brian Phillips RC video because we're gonna go over all the details. It does actually come with a little sticker here, and so that's kinda cool, so we'll leave that out of the way for now and come back to it. Uh, but as we take this plane out of the box, okay, Concendo Evo, so this is gonna be a little bit higher density foam, so it's like less wiggly and more stiff. And you're like, well, but I'm a brand new pilot. You see how that doesn't bend? This is EPO, but it's a higher density EPO, okay? So when you get the higher density EPOs, you're gonna to tend to have a more stiff wing, which is good for a plane that's fast, that scoops, okay? But it's bad for planes that crash. So when you're catching this plane, and that's the only reason I bring this up is I like to catch sailplanes if I can. And of course, I'm not skilled enough to always do it effectively. And so having a little bit stiffer foam means that when you do drop a tip, um, when you're coming in to catch it, it's more likely to break. The good news is China glue will work just fine on this stuff. Although it does work better on the more, the more flexible stuff I've found. Not that it doesn't work, it just works a little easier on that. Okay, so we've got decals on here. Pretty basic, it's a white model. And so you can see through it here and you can see there's lots of reinforcement in here, not, not the least of which is right here under this tape. And you can see it's got a little bit of play on the end, okay? But this is what we're concerning ourselves with today is predominantly the flapper on mod, okay? So the flapper on mod is an easy thing to do, but it does take a little bit of doing. And so what we'll do is we'll alternatively show that if you want, you can cut this out and you can actually install a servo and do an inboard flap. Now the performance on this plane will be really, really good with an inboard flap and it's quite easy to do because there should be an extra channel on this which we'll talk about later. But that is one of the things we wanna do. When you have a near full length flap on, it's actually pretty effective. But see, this doesn't go all the way to the inboard portion, it stops. And if I, if I have a full length aileron or even all the way to the tip, then I feel like inboard flaps are inferior to a flapper on. And that's only once in a while you're gonna get that. Okay, generally speaking, you're gonna have an aileron that goes outboard as opposed to an inboard flap. The inboard flaps are gonna require a down elevator correction so that you don't get ballooning when you deploy flaps. That is when they come down, they're gonna create this like lifting effect that's gonna push you up into the air. And so you correct with the down elevator. So the elevator comes down and helps to keep it level so you slow down, okay? Now this also, since this is sort of a mid-wing aileron, as opposed to like, we'll look at this F7F for ex example. So the F7F has an inboard split inboard because of the dual 
uh, nacelle, engine nacelles. So this is, this is actually the aileron. So that's an outboard aileron, okay? But this is kind of like a midway out, but it favors outboard more than it favors inboard. On some inexpensive planes, you may actually see, and I'm just gonna lay this out of the way, it's not an inexpensive plane, but on some of these cheapy planes, you'll see that they have almost an inboard aileron. Okay, so that is a very poor design and you do tend to get that on these planes, okay? So if they wanted to make more rolling dynamic plane, this would actually be outboard, okay? Now the only reason they do that is so they can get the wash on a cheap plane that's not really well designed. And here's another example. Outboard aileron, top wing, outboard aileron, bottom wing that goes all the way to the tip, okay? So again, flaperons, in my opinion, by definition, are designed to act as it's an aileron that goes down with the other aileron at the same time and acts as a flap while still acting as an aileron, if you didn't know what that was. Now, a lot of times on these midway out ailerons, spoilerons are also deployed and spoilerons will go up and continue to act as an aileron at the same time, but it's just the, the home, the neutral position becomes the spoiler condition or off or flaperons. And so sometimes we'll set it up so it's a flaperon or a spoileron, depending on what you want. Now, the big trade-off is you have to split the signal wire as many times coming through a Y cable. So you only have one channel that's being diverted out to both sides and they act on the same signal. And so the equal and opposite action is fine if you're doing ailerons. But then when you go to do flaperons, you have to actually then split that Y cable somewhere or take out the Y cable and then just go direct to a new channel so that you can control these independently, okay? So that's what we're gonna go into as we do this build. If you're brand new to the hobby and you're just following along and you wanna get a, a sailplane and you're like, hey, can I handle this sailplane? Yes, you can, okay? Even though this is a very capable sailplane, it's not a hard plane to fly and uh, Tower obviously has the ASW20, amazing choice. Okay, so again, we'll just kinda, as we go, we'll keep unboxing, but the premise of this video is gonna be setting up the flap rounds, okay? So we have a folding prop, of course, the braking is gonna stop this motor and it's gonna flop back because of the resistance of the air. Now, if you didn't have braking, meaning the actively, the motor is a brushless motor, so it's gonna actively stop it and then it's gonna fold, okay? So pretty cool. And as you can see, this is not a super long body, okay? You can see based on the wing, you've only got just a little bit longer than one of the wings. Now this wing also overlaps the fuse. So that would be like a top, a high wing, as opposed to a mid wing like this F7F is a mid wing, mm -hmm. okay? Or that T28 is a low wing, or the F86 is a low wing over there behind the Christmas tree, okay? So we're gonna get that mounted shortly. All these things go into the different flap versus flapper on value equation, okay? So same thing on this. This thing uh, comes out of the box ready to go and all you have to do is hold your sticks in a certain condition and you can actually cause these to operate as flapperons or spoilerons, depending on how you set up your radio, which we do show in our Unbox Build radio setup and Maiden Flights, right? Since this yes, is a there's UMX. only one video for we that. We only do one video on most mm -hmm. UMX planes, okay? But again, there is room for an inboard flap if you ever decided you really wanted to go crazy, but that would be pretty hard on this because it has a multi-purpose brick, which is acting as a receiver, flight controller, and all that. Whereas over here, we have a receiver that's separate from the ESC that is designed to be reprogrammed if you, if you wish, okay? So as you can see here, we've got this piece that's gonna go in on top of the fuse and hold the wings together. And then there's a wing joiner mm -hmm. for the tail. Now you do have to tape the tail on on this if I remember right, which is goofy, uh, but don't be surprised by that. That's not unusual on sailplanes to have tape involved, okay? So pin change design with reinforcement of tape. I'm kind of glad to say that we've gotten away from that largely on most models, but this is a small tail. So there's just not that much material and you don't wanna have a super heavy tail because anything that goes at the end of this boom, you have to counter with counterweight 
or a heavier motor, a bigger battery, that sort of thing, and you just bog down the plane. So that's one thing I can say about this Concendo Evo that's better than the Tower ASW28 is that this one seems to be lighter on its feet. Now the ASW28 is very good, um, but this one is probably a little bit more efficient in sailing um, and thermal, you know, as a thermal ship. Okay, so the other wing here. Oh, and I was gonna mention this earlier. Sometimes when you have a mid-wing aileron that's acting as a flapron, the elevator correction will actually be opposite because you'll deploy an outboard aileron will almost always make the plane dive. And so you have to put the elevator up, which is ironic because I don't remember what this does because it's been <laughs> a while since I've flown it, okay? Okay. So we'll have to guess and check. So elevator compensation is uh, a time delayed compensation. So it's gonna be exactly the same rate of speed that you deploy your flaps for the elevator compensation, which is usually expressed in terms of percentages. And the percentage is either plus or minus. Um, and it just depends on what direction the elevator's throwing. It's not some like absolute possible, you know, like absolute um, standard, okay? Right. So generally we go positive values on spectrum products is the way it works out. Uh, and that would make the elevator go down and then a negative value would make it go up. And we'll show you that in the flap setup as we get there. Okay, so we have this wing joiner, wing spar, uh, wing spar rather, that's right here. And it's, it's taped in there like really good for some reason. Okay, very stiff, very heavy actually. I'm not mm -hmm. sure why they did that so heavy. They must have uh, really needed some extra needed strength the there. I, I doubt they needed weight. You generally, most planes you want to be light, okay? Yeah. There's only one place you want weight in a plane and that is to make counterweight because you want the weight to be as far out on the boom, on the tail, or as far out on the nose as you can get, or as far out on the wings, depending on what you're trying to compensate for. Uh, because you want the least amount all up weight so that you can fly a lighter plane because lighter planes tend to perform better in general. It doesn't mean they're gonna be like a bad plane if they're heavy, it's just that they're gonna be a less good plane generically if they're heavy. Okay, so piece count guys, let's look. We've got one tail. Oh, and by the way, we didn't look at this, but there is a little bit of reinforcement in here. Hard to see when I hold that up against the light. But if you look real close, you can see that little cutout in the foam. That usually means that there is something that's embedded that's jigged into this foam because that's where their jig would actually receive the piece. Okay, so telltale sign for you. Same thing on mini wings. Like you can look right here and you can see they've jigged in for something here. Okay, you wanna know what that is? That's where this that's where this is going to slide into its receiver, okay? So when you see those points on a injection molded foam wing or body part, you can tell what that was, that's a jig point. So if you imagine two halves of a mold opened up, there'll be a little piece that's like here and here and here and they lay the piece of fiberglass or carbon fiber in there and then they, they close the mold up and then they inject it and it fills it in. And then when they take the mold apart, it's just in the middle of the wing and it helps to strengthen it. So that's, that's one of the things they do when they're designing these molds. All right, great. So what do we have? We have piece count one, two, three, four, five, six, if you include the bag, seven, eight. That's pretty low piece count, but we do have a couple of screws in here. And then this was going to be one of our concerns right here. You can see we've got a Y cable that's going out that's gonna work to go to the wing, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna grab the plane stand real quick. And a plane stand, if you guys don't have a plane stand, you don't need a plane stand to do this, but it is definitely a good thing. Now, I'm gonna just warn you, if you guys are brand new to the hobby and you're watching this video, you can literally disregard the flap around part because you don't need it, okay? If you don't have enough channels to support it, don't worry about it. We're gonna be showing this on the NX-10, which is gonna give us a lot of channels, more than we're gonna need, uh, but you might be using the NX-70, like this white and, uh, looks, just look over there for the livestock, you'll mm -hmm. see it. And uh, this is the NX-10, so of course it's going to give us plenty of extra channels, but you don't have to do that. This is a release button for the hood, or the canopy, pops out, okay, pretty simple. And then you can see right here, save select plug, remove prior to initiating TX bind, 
And then we have, of course, a warning for the prop. Now, I do have to admit on this type of plane, you wanna be kind of careful, you don't get cut because it is a prop. And most people are not gonna take the prop off on an application like this. But if you're concerned, even remotely, go ahead and work through the process of undoing this screw by holding the nut and then undoing the screw Phillips number probably two. Just unscrew that, take the prop off, make sure you get them back on there the right way. So you could just mark one of them with a black marker and then make a dot or something. And you'll know which side goes to which, okay? And you gotta pay, pay special attention to the direction it's going. That's gonna turn what direction from the face? Counterclockwise. Thank you, so counterclockwise. All right, so scissors. This is the bind plug, so I'm just gonna cut that off. Uh, that is just basically, it says AS3X only. Show them both sides of that. Now this is the old method for binding so that you can turn safe on and off, okay? And we'll show you the normal process, but you see this, guys? I gotta cut this. This is the warning. I like to take these off. I am fully warned. Thank you, manufacturer. You've done your job. Now I'm gonna take this off because the truth is you don't wanna get cut, and especially if you're new uh, to the hobby, you always wanna have full command and control of your plane before you actually energize the plane, okay? So you're gonna turn this on first. You're gonna have everything set up and then you're gonna basically not trust this until you do trust it, okay? We'll show you that as we go through. But that being said, this may not be necessary to stay here, and we do have an IC3 connector here, which is gonna give you this additional data port right there, as you can see. There's kind of like a pin in the middle. So this is compatible with EC3 connectors and IC3 connectors, but not XT connectors. So this, of course, would be an example of an XT connector here on this particular battery. You can see an XT60. So if you have one of those, you'll have to get an adapter. One of my batteries was just getting complete. So you'd have to have some sort of an adapter like this. Um, and in our case, we're gonna be using a smart battery. Looks like this one just got completed. So this is a 4S uh, 2230C. Okay, so nothing, nothing real special about that and we've got the IC3 end, okay? So just remember, you're gonna want 4S at some point, but if you're a beginner, this might be a time where you go ahead and use 3S. You're gonna be very powerful still and have plenty of juice to get out of trouble. You're gonna have plenty of juice to enjoy the flight performance, and that would be just like this. So we'll open this one up real quick and show you how we're gonna charge that. Okay, so pop this out. I do not know why we got the green dots on these ones. I wonder what that is no all idea. about. Um, never had green dots like that before. My scissors are way over on the other side of the room, so I'm just gonna use a knife to cut that. Way over there. Way over there. Okay, so then we have this stupid safety warning again. Good Lord, it just says you need a smart charger. Now this is a Gen 2, okay? Gen 2 batteries are gonna not have a balance lead, okay? The Gen 1 batteries do have a balance lead, okay? So this would be the same size, you can see there's kind of a darker orange on the Gen 2 compared to the Gen 1, okay? So the telltale signs that you have a Gen 2 would be the fact that this has no balance lead. The telltale signs that you have a Gen 1 would be the balance line, balance lead. And then the second telltale sign is the color, if you notice the color, and slightly different branding. This also says G2, but Gen 1 won't say it, okay? Now you could totally use a Gen 1 or a Gen 2, it doesn't really matter to me, but I am just gonna use the Gen 2, so I'll show you how that works. If you guys need a charger and you're sure you're only gonna be doing 4S, the charger I would recommend for you is the more inexpensive S155. Okay, so it's gonna give you 55 watts, one channel, but it still gives you this thing. Same as that, I happen to be using it, so I'm not gonna show that. But what I would really recommend is if you know you're in it, if you know you're hooked, just get the S2200. It's gonna give you 200 watts on two channels, and the thing that's nice about smart batteries is you plug them in and they start charging, okay? Camera crew's gonna go over here and she's gonna show the screen. Here's the other thing I like to do. Now this is, this is a means to an end for us since we film, okay? So I'm gonna go to stop and I'm gonna press and hold and then I'm gonna go to my smart settings, okay? Smart settings. And then I'm gonna change this 72 hours. Now this is, you can change that to whatever you want. That's when it automatically starts discharging. Guess what I do? The max, okay? And you'll notice on a Gen 2, the uh, storage voltage is 3.9 instead of 3.8, okay? 
That means per cell. Okay, now I'm gonna start this. It's charging at 2.2 when it gets fired up. It does ramp up for a second. Now it's gonna be the same over here. You can do all the same features on this and you still have that flippy doohickey so you can go IC3 or EC3. So this is, oh, excuse me, IC3, EC3, or IC5, EC5, which is good when you get into the larger batteries, uh, something like 7000s, you know, with these big ends. Okay, so that's a 6S. But you won't be able to do anything bigger than 4S on the S155. It's just considerably cheaper. I think these ones go for around 50 to 60 bucks, depending on when you're buying it. This one here is gonna be in the couple hundred dollar range, but it's good money after bad if you're getting this, knowing that you're not gonna necessarily Here's the catch. It's not good money after bad because you can still use it on your 4S packs. Because even with all the batteries that we have, I still find myself doing a lot of 3 and 4S applications, mm -hmm. okay? So this one's charging, this one's done. We'll have it ready for our next setup, okay? Which is gonna happen after we get ready to finish our unbox. We have a cat that's uh, feverishly exploring over here. All right, so the next thing we have to do to build this plane is probably get the tail built. The tail is pretty easy to build, so let's just do that next, probably. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so when considering how to build this, you can look at your instruction manual. I already told you you probably won't need to do that in this video. Uh, we also need to put the decals on. Okay, so we'll just lay this plastic out of the way so I can keep that like everything else. Of course. Carbon fiber, the reason I drop them like that is so you can hear that noise. It sounds different than fiberglass, and so that's how you can tell it's also very light, mm -hmm. okay? So this is gonna go in here, pretty simple stuff. You don't need to glue these on. You, you will have to tape though, okay? So I, I like to slide that on, but you can actually pass that through. Are you gonna show them down here so they can see the hole? Mm -hmm. Okay, it passes through really, really, really easy. Okay, and then just slide it in. It's literally simple as that. Now, the instruction manual is gonna tell you exactly where you need to plug things in. Okay, so the instruction manual, as in what control horn position. And that's one of the reasons why we like, see this? It shows putting it into that top hole, okay? Now, I like to have a little bit more elevator authority on my planes, but I'm just gonna set it up the way that it's gonna be per the manual. So normally I don't actually insert the elevator control horn because we want this surface to be centered. But since this is a plug and fly, or excuse me, this is a bind and fly instead of a plug and fly, that means that this should already have been centered at the factory for us. And then also just double check that these rods are not slipped, okay? They can impact movement. So that's not done. There's actually a little bit of tape that's included here in this other bag. It's got a few screws in there, okay? And this tape goes on the tail. Now there's also some decals that go on the bottom, if I remember right, and I don't remember for certain, but does this actually show? I'm not sure that it did. Um, okay, well, flip the box around and see if it's on the bottom. Yes, it okay. does show the Good bottom. Good enough, just okay. leave it there. So, see this? These little things are tape, okay? It's just a really high quality tape. So let's come up close. See this? This needs to be peeled carefully, right? Just like that. And I am going to deliver this to four points. I can kind of move this. You really gotta make sure you're not blocking my light. Okay, so that's that. So they give you a total of four of these, okay? So the four of these are gonna allow you to tape the top and the bottom. Now here's another trick if you have trouble reaching underneath those apparatus. Use the waxy side to do this, okay? So you can take the waxy side, you can kind of stick it back on the corner, and then that'll allow you to get under there if you find that it's challenging to actually lay that straight, okay? Now also keep in mind there is a mold release agent that's implied uh, to this foam piece and all foam pieces that are molded. And so sometimes the tape will not give you good adhesion. Now, generally speaking, if you do have problems with that, get yourself a little bit of acetone or a little bit of alcohol, a little bit, put it on a rag and just give it a real quick wipe. Don't go crazy. You don't want to react with the foam. 
Okay. So there's that. Not acetone. Don't do acetone. Sorry, guys. Take that back. Just use alcohol. Rub, like rubbing yeah, alcohol? Yeah, rubbing alcohol. Okay. Like, like the kind you would use for medical stuff. Okay? That's what I would use. Not like booze. Don't like pour your bourbon on there. Don't waste that. Especially if you're... Uh, hon, can you put your hand right here, please? Hold it tight like you mean it. Okay, let go. See this? I'm trying, I'm trying to pull this in and it's wanting to walk away from me. And so the camera crew needs to hold all the way in here, okay? And you see what's happening as, to my chagrin, it's not closing the gap. And since this is gonna get taped, I'm just gonna have to do it with three hands, okay? It doesn't really matter, but I'm just saying over 10, I'm okay, you can let go now. So you see what I did there? All I did was just stop it from popping out, okay? That's it. It's not gonna be a problem because it's retained on there. Now, if you're really concerned still, you can use some China glue, China. Okay, and China glue is expressed. If you're new to the hobby and you're wondering what that is, China glue is one of two varieties that we generally use. There's actual China glue like this, which just comes from like an unmarked tube I write on it. This stuff came from FMS. Or there's foam to foam, which has actually got like warning labels. So it's like, yeah, don't eat it. Don't catch it on fire. This is QR code, this is made in UK. So it's mm -hmm. like actually following the rules. Uh, but ironically enough, the price point is pretty similar based on the different sizes of material. It just depends on where you're ordering, okay? So I recommend if you don't have any foam to foam, and sometimes they run specials on this and they'll sell below cost when they like order way, way, way too much of it. This stuff is really good. The only complaint I have about this compared to this is that the uh, cheaper China glue, you have to pierce the tips on the cheaper stuff, which is nice. And then these ones come with a pre-pierced tip but I've never had one of these come out of the box lame. Okay, see, it's already excited to see me, <clears throat> which is awkward. Okay, China Glue is a contact adhesive. Also, this stuff is very clear. This stuff is very clear. Sometimes if you get the really cheap China Glue, it's gonna look like, like almond colored, okay? It's kind of yellowy. Yeah, yellowish hue. Yeah. Like this backdrop actually is pretty close backdrop. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but it's still, it's still thin, so it's like, an, it, it will go onto a white surface and basically look white. The key is you spread it onto a surface, you spread it onto the mating surface and you let it sit for a few minutes. And then you stick it and you're like, holy crap, I can't get that apart if I want it. If you do it too prematurely, you'll be able to pull it apart, just do it a couple of times, and you won't be able to get it apart. We've done it a million times in other videos, if you're curious. The cheaper China glue just tends to not age as well, maybe. Like it kind of yellows more over time. That stuff? Oh, no, not like that the, stuff. Not that stuff, like the cheap No, cheap the stuff, stuff that you'll get with a model once in a while. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this. It's like sideburns, mohawk. But that is one big piece, okay? So it's not hard to do this. And I like this because it's gonna be easy. And I like easy. Ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's figure out which one goes where. Oh yeah, 100% goes there. See how I'm sliding it along? Okay. I'm just gonna put it where it goes. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, self, how are you gonna do that with, with you know, you're going across the movable part? Yeah, that's, for the elevator on the horizontal stabilizer. That is a true and honest issue. So we need an X-Acto knife for something similar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and help me apply this decal because I have to get up under here again. I've already kind of dry fit it so I know about where it goes. And if you're careful the way you do this, these are really sticky, so you gotta be a little bit careful. But since there's no paint to come off, you don't have to worry about it peeling off the paint, okay? So you see how I stuck that down? And then I'm just, with, with the elevator neutral, this of course being the elevator here, we're just gonna pull these apart. And guys, we're kind of doing this video for the beginner. So if you're more advanced and you already know like a million of a million things I've said, just remember, there's always somebody that's newer than you that needs help. And that's a big part of what we do on Brian Phillips RC. So if you're annoyed by that, I really apologize. There's gonna be videos where we lean toward helping people um, that are brand new to the hobby a little bit more than other videos, okay? We do some more sophisticated advanced stuff like setting up flaperons, 
and uh, that sort of thing. So it just mixed in, okay? Now, the options are you can try to follow that down the contour and then push it all the way into the joint, but that's very challenging to do and it almost never works. What I recommend is cutting right here so that this goes down instead of cutting right here because it's just gonna peel that off then, okay? So I'm gonna take and just cut this right here and just follow along. The sharper your knife, the better it'll work. And then just push that little bit in and they're probably still gonna peel up anyway. So all I do is I just find the edge and just follow along with the sharp knife. And I don't know if the camera crew can see, but I am cutting, mm -hmm. so you're just gonna have to work around it. Yep. Okay, so I'm pushing this in. And if you have Q-tips in your kitchen like I do, then you can use Q-tips to do that step too. But really super simple, basic setup. Um, and same thing here, we'll just give it a quick once over, make sure we aren't uh, gonna sit it in the wrong spot. This one should be a little easier because I'm right-handed and I'm on the right side here. It's actually technically the left side, but it's upside down, okay? So guys, that reminds me when and if you're getting this as a beginner, like I said earlier, I don't want you guys to even bother with flap rounds. Just fly it a little bit, get used to it, and then come back to the flap rounds. The only thing that flap rounds are gonna help you with is slowing the plane down for landings and then eating, eating up some of the inertia that you're gonna carry with this plane because it's very efficient flying. And so what happens, is, especially if you're flying in safe, they'll tend to carry forever, okay? And so um, you can slip a model like this, which is where you use your ailerons and your rudder together to kind of use up some of that energy and bleed off some of the energy so you can get it to the ground. Where did the knife go? I it rolled under. Where did it go? There, there it went is. way under the wing. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this here and follow along. I'm gonna slide this down in just like that. Okay, and if you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, this is what we like to do. We unbox, build, and radio set up these planes so that you don't have to look at a manual if you don't want but we try our best to teach as much stuff as we go. And I know that's probably a little bit frustrating for you if you're more experienced. Just keep in mind, we don't do it to frustrate you. We do it to help the new pilots out there, okay? All right, so another thing real quick as we go ahead, you saw earlier I had to dig these out of the wings. That's normal and that's, uh, that's typical, okay? So they slide those into this hole because that is actually what's gonna happen is this is gonna slide in here. Once we assemble the plane, this will hold the two halves together. Now, because of the way this wing goes in to the top of the fuselage, what I'll do is I'll show you right now because we can flip this over. It should be done on the tail section now. Okay. I've kind of got this prop intentionally hung off the end so when we're ready to start up the motor, we can do that without compromising our stand. Okay, so you see we've got these two wires. That's where they're gonna connect if you're brand new to the hobby and you don't wanna worry about flap rounds, okay? So I'm just uh, kinda hanging onto the wing and sliding that in. Good Lord, that's hard to that's slide really in. That's really tight. So then I'm gonna take this wire and I'm just, this is a servo cable and I'm just gonna kinda fold it over a little bit. So it's got a little bit of memory. And then same thing here with this one. Now this is gonna be inside the cavity. So if your tape is peeling up a little bit, it's not a big deal because you're not gonna be outside of the uh, fuse until about there. Okay, the fuselage. Okay. Then I can take this wing and I can actually assemble it fully by sliding this in. So once you get these two halves attached to one another, by using the joiner or the wing spar, depending on what type of plane, Okay, then you can also put this on. Okay, so this is just gonna hold those wings in position and there's plastic reinforcing all the way around those holes, okay? So once you slide that in, then you have a wing that can be detached, but I don't take apart planes this size um, because even if I was gonna put it in a car, I would be able to fit it. So now at this point, you could plug those in and drop this on and you'd be basically done. With the exception of if you had a massive adjustment on your elevator rudder, you can adjust almost none here, just so you know, okay? Because of the way those linkages work. You're gonna be doing the vast majority of your adjustment actually with this horn, or excuse me, with this uh, clevis that comes off of the end of that threaded rod. You can uh, 
turn that in or out by disconnecting it and just turning it in or out to make up for your mechanical adjustments, okay? Mechanical adjustments are not electronic trim adjustments, but they're still trim adjustments. You just don't have to depend on the trim that's in the radio system, okay? We showed how to do that a number of different times. I just wanna get that away from the edge. Now, okay, so quick, while we have this wing in a, an easy to work on spot, I'm gonna go ahead and put these decals on. If you wanna just uh, show this. the people at home. Oh yeah, so just take, I don't know that there's bigger or littler. So it just looks like this guys. So I'm just gonna take one and, whoops, one. Uh, looks like there's three of them. So I don't think they're different sizes, but I could be mistaken. Uh, yeah, they are. They are actually different sizes, guys. So what I, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same two. I think these are the middle ones, maybe. Nope. There's two big ones and one small one per side, okay? Okay. So these ones appear to be the same size. Nope, this one's bigger. So then same thing here. We'll just lay those over here. And I don't know if you guys could tell what I was doing to figure out which one's which. They're not numbered or anything. So just lay them on top of each other. You can see which one's the biggest. So of course the biggest one's gonna be um, sort of inboard, but you wanna be out far enough so you don't uh, impact your fuselage there. And then that one's gonna be something like that. And then right here, this one's gonna be something like this. Now, tip of the day, if you need more of that clear tape right here, because your tape fails, look, this is all super similar material, see? Oh, okay. Yep. So you've got like enough to put the wing on and off like 500 times by just cutting that up, okay? Great. I'll file that away for you. Camera crew loves when I save things like that. <laughs> um, okay, so real quick, we're gonna lay these on here and we'll just go through that process. It looks like I can probably bring this one just outside so we don't have to cut it. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that right now. These decals are obviously just going to make for better visibility. And I'm gonna tell you this, you may think, hey, I'd like to keep it white on the bottom because I think it's gonna look cool. Just remember, your plane will be kind of hard to see at times. So I would suggest that you install these um, even if you're not like a giant fan. The other cool thing about these particular decals is they're so easy to take off if you should change your mind after the fact because they're just, they're just easy to take off, okay? So in fact, sometimes on these models, you'll find that they buzz and they'll drive you crazy because they try to take themselves off. If that's you or that happens to you, you can always replace these or you can use some uh, spray paint and stuff like that. But I would just be careful about how much weight you add to the plane if you decide to go that route. Can you glue them back down? Mm, maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't tell people to do it. So it looks like this one's probably, is that gonna in overlap? The, in the picture, it does not, well, it's really, it kind of does overlap the aileron. Okay, so I'm gonna but overlap the aileron to. twice and that's just the way it is, okay? So I'm fine with it, it's not a big deal, it's just, less work if you don't have to trim these. Just, and it's the exact same process we did on the elevator. Um, the only difference is, I think I'm gonna, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just gonna look better if I just intentionally go all the way over the edge there. But you see how easy it is to get those to come back up. So what I like to do is lay them down and then work the bubbles out. Pretty easy process. You don't have to be like an expert decal applicator to do this, obviously. And I'm definitely not. Okay, so we'll slide that down. Oh, by the way, the other day, well, no, I'll, tell, I'll say that story for a different video. Okay. I was gonna talk about Cali graphics, but I don't think a lot of people are gonna do Cali graphics on this plane. No, probably not. Just because, but we had a subscriber that sent us a Cali graphics uh, sticker on that F7F because the wet decals didn't stick well. And uh, so I lost like half of my hot chick on the nose. So my camera crew was super devastated by that. <laughs> but I told her, I was like, it's a hot blonde, big busty blonde. I said, it reminds me of somebody I know. Who would that be? Wouldn't want that to go away. Camera crew. Needed to be replaced immediately. Yeah. It's very important. It, it was nice. So you know who you the, are. And it did work really nice. It did work really nice. Yeah. So, all right. So guys, let's talk about this real quick. I want to have an easy, quick measurement tool and I don't want to get out the calipers, although we probably could just as well. Look at that. I went right to the edge. Huh, that was pretty cool. 
So I can just locate that by finding the exact same spot where I did my overlap by going that way, by going that way. That's gonna be good enough. It's, that doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but do your best. You'll probably like it better if it is symmetrical, okay? Now, the other thing too is I like the high contrast on the top versus the bottom on this model uh, because that really does help for visibility. And when it's high contrast from the top to the bottom, it's a little easier to tell which way's up. And if you're new to the hobby and you're not familiar with that, that knife just walked so badly when I did that. That's the first decal that did that. And so that's a little bit of a disappointment, but what are you gonna do? Okay, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's annoying. Of course. There's always one that's the outlier. Yep. All right. Which is weird. You wouldn't think that it would have that sort of behavior to it, but you'll get it once in a while on these decals. Okay, so just trying to get the same starting point here. Yeah, that should be fine. And again, these are just decals. It's not rocket science, guys, unless, of course, it's a rocket you're building. Okay, so I'm going to go down further and slide along the surface this time, and it still tried to walk on me this time. I don't know what the heck happened. So I'll just walk back the other way. But it, it definitely looked better that time. All right, guys, so without further ado, the wing is done. The build would be done. I mean, obviously, we're talking a lot about the way we're going to set things up, and so this build is taking longer than it would have to if we just blasted through it. Uh, but just a quick friendly reminder, there's lots of new people that need help. That's why we do this on Brian Phillips RC. If you're brand new to this community of RC and you're having trouble getting help, don't feel bad. That is not unusual. But if you find a good club and you've got a good flying place and you've got somebody to give you a hand, great. But just remember, we're here to help you even if you can't find that and we're gonna try to get you in the air and so you can have the best possible experience. There's a warning here about this motor being hot. I didn't cut that off yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off now because motors get hot. Um, and this one in particular gets really hot, so just be careful because it is to where you could touch it. I mean, it's actually harder on this plane than most, but whatever. So I'm not really sure why they went out of their way to- To warn on that one. That. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of an unusual warning. Now there also is an electronic speed control in here. If you don't know what that is, that helps to control the brushless motor, okay? Brushless motors are a little bit more efficient and they don't have brushes. Brushes are a contact point on either side of a motor uh, that spin and so they wear out, okay? They literally get consumed like a pencil tip. Um, and this, these are brushless. So they have magnets that are mounted to a stator, the outside of the motor, and the timing between the magnetic coils gets changed by the electronic speed control, which is back here. And it's controlled and it also provides the BEC, which is the battery eliminator circuit that runs all the rest of the electronics for the servos. There's four, um, two for the wings and then two for the, uh, one respectively for the elevator and one for the rudder. And then of course it provides power for things like lights and the receiver and things like that. And you're like, where is the receiver, Brian? I haven't even seen it. It's under here. Okay. So the receiver is under here. We need to get a Phillips screwdriver so we can continue the build. Okay, so we've got a screwdriver kit here, just foam holding a bunch of screwdrivers, nothing special about that. And what I wanna do is I wanna get something that's gonna work. Looks like just like a middle size, middle of the road. Pull the screw out, pop this opened. Okay. So this is the receiver. And just so you don't lose your screw, just slide that in there. So we have the AR63 or excuse me, 637TA. Now, that seems super familiar to other ones we use all the time, except it's got an alpha, an A at the end. What that means is this one is the cheaper, more economy version of the AR637T, which is gonna give you more telemetry. It's gonna give you a barometer. That's the main principal difference. This is still smart, it still has the push button for binding, not that you would have to use that because you can't actually bind up front if you don't have a screwdriver to actually get in there when you get to work. But if you wanna just take a minute and study this with us, we have channels five and six totally unplugged, but that does not mean that they're unused, okay? Now, something you may not be aware of, if you have a 10-channel transmitter, eight-channel transmitter, or even the NX6, the original NX, 
which is really, I don't I wouldn't get that right now. I'd go for the 7E before I'd get the 6. The 6 actually had an additional channel, so great marketing. But uh, anyway, this 10 will give us control of channels beyond the pluggable channels, even on the A as opposed to the T, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the T A as opposed to the, the, just the regular T, which is the full feature, okay? So keep that in mind. If you need to control additional values like master gain or on off of different modes, that is available. But generally when you get a bind and fly plane, they set them up and they'll use those pluggable channels, which is really annoying. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to undermine all that and end up with a good flapper on equipped model right now. So our next move is gonna be to, of course, build a profile that's gonna allow us to have flaperons. But in order to do this, we need to talk about that pesky Y cable, okay? There is a Y cable that comes up here, a Y splitter. And you can see you've got a cable that goes down. Okay, and I just gotta figure out which one's which. There it is, it's going there. You see how I'm tugging on it? So it's going to channel two in this case. So if it's channel two that's getting that, then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get forceps. If you guys don't know what forceps or hemostats, they're really handy for this type of thing. You don't have to use forceps or hemostats, but I'm gonna tell you this, they really do make life easier. And so we recommend them. And these are cheap. I think I got these for like five bucks each yeah, or something. Yeah, they're... We have links to all sorts of mm -hmm. weird things like this, like the plane stand, and of course the transmitters, batteries, all that stuff. But we have supplies on Brian Phillips RC. Mm -hmm. So check this out. We don't generally link to those in the video description. We just link back to Brian Phillips RC and you can find those easy enough. Yep, there's a little tab at the top of the page. So you see how there's two wires coming out of this. Now before, wait, before you unplug that, you may wanna just keep the Y cable in there because it's a pain in the butt to wrap that through. Now alternatively, and I just need to warn you, if you're gonna do flaperons, you're gonna to have to do one of two things. You can either reach this wire through the fuse, and I'm just gonna warn you, that's gonna be challenging because mm -hmm. you see you don't have a lot of extra length. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you're probably not gonna have good luck, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get into my bag of tricks and take one of these. No, I'm not. You wanna know why? Because this plate already has it. You wanna know where it comes from? Where? Right here, the bind plug. See? Mm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take the bind plug, which is currently plugged in right here, bind program SRXL2, okay? So we can unplug that and I'm gonna steal that and we'll have that available when we're ready. Now I can still get in here and bind. It's not like you have to have the extension cord, but in my case, because I wanna do flat bronze, I just wanna show the fact that it does come and it's already equipped inside of the model. Now, one other thing, I'm gonna be able to grab this now and I can give a, just a gentle tug on this and it feels like maybe it got glued a little bit, probably when they did something in here. So I'm gonna tug the other direction and see if it comes back to me. Oh, it's just double-sided tape it's riding along, okay? See how I did that? Now, it's right here. Are you showing the people? It's right here. So I'm gonna pull this all, it's kind of a big connector, so it's not gonna be very fun. It might be easier to pull the other way. So I'm gonna, uh, the smaller end is actually outside the bottom. Now that it's able to move, it's not too bad, okay? So I'm gonna pull this back through, and once I get this through, it's not too bad. Just keep it in mind, this is a little bit of a bummer if you have to bind it again, because you'll have to reach in there. It'll take you like one second, and then you can press that bind button, okay? But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this through. Now, the other thing too is keep in mind if you decide to set up the full featured flaperons on here, and you don't wanna give up AS3X or safe on one of your wings, which you will, but remember they're redundant, so you don't actually technically have to have them on both sides then you may have to reprogram the ESC, which we're gonna show you how to do that too. Good lordy, lord, lord. I'm having trouble getting this pulled through. I feel like I'm bound up on something. So you guys see what I'm doing here? This is the extension cord, and I feel like I'm caught on something, and I don't wanna rip the end off, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the ESC just a little bit, and I'm just gonna kinda 
try to work this a little bit so I hopefully don't break it. But you see, I'm really struggling to get that through. That's like, feels like I'm gonna rip it. And you don't wanna rip it, okay? So I'm gonna try going in like this. So guys, remember, if you're brand new to the hobby and you wanna see how to set this up, we actually have the Unbox Build Radio set up. Probably using an NX6 instead of a 10. It shouldn't really be anything too difficult to follow along. So you can just watch the original. This one's gonna include the flaperons, okay? The other thing is you can add your own cable as well. I'm just concerned I'm gonna be adding my own cable because I'm about to break this, pulling it out, okay? I don't know why it's being so difficult getting through. I must have caught the edge of foam or something. Oh, see, now it's freed up again. Is there any where to wiggle? There it goes. There it goes. Okay, so if you ever pull really hard on a servo end like that, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take these leads and you're gonna make sure you didn't lose any of them. You see how they move inside of there? They're all in there and they all seem to be intact, so we should be okay. So now, my next move is I've got this Y cable in here, okay? So one of these is not gonna be necessary. It's not gonna be used. So I'm actually gonna just intentionally I'm gonna feed this wire through. If you wanna give them a good shot right from here, see what I'm gonna do? I need to go to this side, okay? So I wanna feed this through probably wherever it's gonna fit. Okay, so it's going through, sort of, is it? Come on now, don't make me look like an idiot. I already did that enough. And then one of these two, I'm just literally going to park it right here so I don't accidentally try to plug into it, right? Nothing magical, just to make things easier, okay? And then look, we've got this extra cable here, okay? So now remember, if this was inboard flaps or whatever, you've got the open channel, I believe on channel six, so we can test that. And you're like, well, how do you know how to plug that in? Look at the way the others are plugged. This one got kind of pulled out a little bit when I was doing that, so I'm gonna push that back in. So I'm assuming we'll plug into channel six for now so we can test. And we'll see if they have anything assigned on there. So channel six is now plugged in and it's going to the front. Okay, so nothing too terribly difficult about that. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back over. And all of a sudden we have independent channels or we will after we reset to factory defaults the receiver, okay? So we're gonna need to eventually put on the wings so they come with uh, screws here. Let's go ahead and pop those out of the bag. That'll be our next move to go ahead and put the wing on. And you're probably thinking to yourself, you're gonna put the wing on when you've got that thing all janked up like that? No, I can still get to the bottom. So should be no problem. Also, there is a vine plug included in this model, as well as a couple of these hose clippings, which are used for the control arms, if you wanna show them real quick on there. Oh, here, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna put this wing on now. So obviously we have to get the wing on. So the easiest way in my experience is to just plug these in um, while it's upside down. Okay, so brown to brown. So brown is down now, so plugged in. And then I don't even care with regard to which one's which. It does not matter to me, okay? I just wanna make sure my cables can be well managed so that I can get this thing down and not have a wire pinched or get into the moving parts which are right here, okay? So I'm actually gonna take and push this wire back through down to the bottom. See, I've caught one of my antenna leads, so I'll double check that's not gonna be a problem after a bit. And then those two can just go in there. And then I just wanna do a quick visual on where they're gonna land so they don't end up causing a problem for the moving parts right there, okay? So then we can just set this down on top. We should be good to go. It's wanting to tip for whatever reason. Okay, so now I'm gonna just get these screws in here. Remember, we already assembled the wing earlier. So there's four screws, two. That one's tight. Number two is tight. Number three, tight. Number four, tight. You guys see this wiggle here? I don't know if you can see that as I'm working in here. You see how it wiggles? You should have seen how much the first one wiggled because this boom, oh my goodness, it was so rubbery on hmm. the Concendo. And so that was always like terrible for performance, but it was really nice for crashability because it survived a little bit more uh, crashes, okay? So as you can see, we have the wing installed. You get a good size scale now. Okay, so obviously this wire poked out for me. 
And what I've got going here, the camera crew is trying to move so she can be uh, in a place where she can see. This is the antenna. You can see there's a 28 millimeter section that's exposed at the end of these antennas. There's actually two on this particular transmitter. And so what they did is they taped it right here. I'm gonna actually eliminate that right now. And I'm gonna show you another trick. If you ever have an antenna you wanna protect, I'm gonna just take like the smallest screwdriver I have like this. And this is super, super, super easy way of doing this. I'm just gonna poke into the foam and just go back like that. Boom, done, okay? Now I just made a cavity with which to hide that. And you're probably thinking to yourself, isn't that gonna impede the antenna's ability to work? Uh, no. Nope, it won't because it's just inside of foam. It's already inside of foam as it is, okay? Now I'm not pinching that. I'm just kind of holding it very loosely. I'm not gonna clip it because that would potentially damage the antenna. And you don't wanna bend right here, okay? So you wanna protect that point where it comes out of the sheath. Okay, see, now I can just tuck that down in there. Really nice way of doing it. Gets that thing out of the way. It's never gonna be a problem then since it's just out of the way. And you see how this one's poked up like that? Just gonna tuck that down. You guys see what I just did there? Mm -hmm. If you have one that's giving you problems, just get some China glue, slide it in there, and just hold that in place, okay? Now this ferrite core, of course, is the enemy of things like that, and it's probably completely unnecessary, but yet, the FCC requires it to be there because some bureaucrat somewhere decided they knew best. Okay? That's really the I way thought, it works. I thought they knew all the things. They Yes, just ask them and they'll yes. let you know. Okay? All right, so then this is the extension cord that was used for SAFE and AS3X. Now, I'm probably going to end up having to move that, and I'm probably going to end up having to move that. So I'm not going to get too crazy about doing cable management, but here I think I'm going to just try to triple it. Should be good. Well, the nice thing is once it's bound and you put that little cover back on, you're not going to get back into right. this cavity. So. Right. And the other thing is, if you look at this, you see how you're going to have a place where you can get to your bind plug, okay, or your bind button. It's nice to be able to press that with a screwdriver without taking this cover off. And so one thing you can do is if you heat up uh, one of the tips of your screwdriver or you take a drill bit, you can push this through right there and you can make an access, but just keep in mind there's a rib under there. So you wanna make sure you don't hit the rib, okay? All right, so we'll keep this laid off to the side. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our normal radio setup um, as though we were gonna set this up normal and then we'll probably have to show you how to, how to clear the firmware. If you're getting a really new release of this Concendo, they may actually bring the firmware up on the receiver for you and you'll be able to actually clear back to factory defaults without hooking up to any equipment. Today we may have to use some equipment because this might have the older version. We'll find out in a minute. So in order to build a new model, let's start the radio setup portion. So I'm going to just hit cancel and back and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom to add new model. The type is going to be an acro and we're going to create. And the cool thing about this is when you create it on a 10, you can actually move that model to a different transmitter if you've ever upgraded. Um, but the bad news is if you start on a six and you move it to a 10, then it's gonna think it's still on a six. So you may have to recreate. Also, it takes a lot longer when you have a ton of models in here. I'm almost out of model memory. Um, oh, and by the way, if you run out of memory, you can just put stuff on an SD card. And there's an onboard SD card that's located about here, about midway back. Okay, so it's on the main board as well. So if you ever scroll into the system setup and you see two different drive locations, that's the other drive. This is my external drive. I don't know if you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. Can they? Mm -hmm. They can see? See? Look, there it is, okay? So it's a micro SD, all right? Um, okay, so this is the normal setup stuff right here for the bind and fly setup. So I'm gonna just go uh, model type has already been set. If you change that, it'll reset everything. Model name. I'm using a legacy keyboard, by the way, and this is going to be the Concendo Evo 1.5. So we're going to type that in and come right back. All right. So I went with Concendo flap rounds. Normally I would say Concendo Evo 1.5, but because this is going to have flap rounds, it's going to be a little bit different. Okay. So I'll walk out aircraft type. This is where you would change from normal to flap rounds. Now, the other way you can do it is just do normal and set it up. If you're just doing the normal setup, it's really easy, okay? Uh, but in my case, I'm gonna do uh, flap rounds and I'm just gonna select an image. And I think we've got some sailplanes over here, both prop and unpropped. 
Too bad it's a T-tail. There we go, good enough. All right, so flight mode setup. I don't know if we're gonna have to use that yet. We'll find out, we may have to do that. So for now, I'm just gonna go down to channel assign and unassign auxiliary two from B by inhibiting that. And we're gonna come back out. And then we're gonna go into throttle cut first. We're gonna change that to on with switch H. We're gonna look down here in the monitor and see if it's moving. It's not, once we unlock it, it's moving. Now it's locked and it's not gonna move. So we should be safe when we start up. And then I'm gonna go down to uh, flap system and I'm gonna make an assignment to switch B. And they do tell you how to set this up. Nope, they don't because it's not part of the regular model setup, okay? So we're just gonna leave this at probably the middle setting we'll do like minus 50, minus 50, and then plus 50. And we don't even know what direction it's go. It doesn't matter yet because we have to get the set and I'm just gonna make a point to stay in this setting so it's in the neutral setting so it'll be like halfway down, okay? Normal, and you, I'm gonna set that speed to two seconds on switch B and no elevator compensation or correction yet, okay? So then we'll also go to timer. We'll change it from five minutes. We'll do a one out and it's probably gonna go a long time but we'll just set it to 10. At one minute, I want to call out for voice. At 20, I want nothing. At 10, I want a voice countdown. And then at expiration, I want tone and vibrate with the tone every minute thereafter, okay? Now, we're also going to set up dual rates in Expo. This is probably going to be highly subjective. So if you don't like the way I set it up, just do it your way, okay? If you're brand new to the experience, okay, so we'll go five, 10, and then 20. And then we'll drop the rates down to 90, okay? So that's our starting point. If we need more, we got a lot more. If we need less, we got about half, okay? And we do that for all three control axis on the same switch. And if you're thinking to yourself, but you have so many switches, why don't you just use a different switch? The answer is because I wanna have simplicity because at the end of the day, I wanna be able to get to the ground. If there's a setup problem, I can already tell you right now, this is not gonna be a setup issue, okay? Because I've flown this plane before and I've set it up before and I've done this hundreds of times and it's a really good way to get you in the air, get you started, and then you can refine from there. So let's say you were flying along and your sticks were super sensitive on the rudder, which they won't be, and you're like, I need more soft sticks. You put it there and you're done. You get to the ground, you make that your new middle setting, this becomes 20, maybe you drop the rates to 90, and then up here you make that like 75% and 40, and then you leave this one or you set that to 10, so it'd be a having and a doubling effect, right? The cats are in the box. Are they both in the box? I don't know. Probably. Okay, so differential you could technically use. We're not gonna worry about that yet. And we should be good on everything else. We're gonna be ready to bind here in a second. Now keep in mind, this is not set up as per, yeah, there were two cats in there. I think what happened is they found the shipping label at the bottom. There's like a little piece of paper oh, with like playing that. Playing with it in there? Yeah, exactly. Seems about right. So I'm ready to bind. I need to make sure I'm prepared to deal with a prop that could potentially come alive and damage my skin and tissue. So I'm gonna make sure I don't have that happen by protecting myself. I'm gonna put this that way. Now, I don't have to set this up with a 4S plane or 4S battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just lay this over here so it's ready to go for when we do fly. I'll just grab a 1300 3S. Yes, you can actually fly this on a 13 3S, but it's gonna be hard to get the CG right, okay? The only reason I'm doing this, I don't know why it keeps Wait, wanting to tip. Yeah. There's something about the way this is set up, but it just wants to rock. Okay, so now remember, when I plug this in, look where the prop is. I'm gonna just hold my hand up like this. I'm gonna give that a second to initiate. And then once we have developed trust, it's not gonna initiate unless it's level and it needs to be level and sitting still for like five seconds. But it's not bound. So that's it's right. Initiate. Good call camera crew. But you also notice this isn't started and that's a good sign. So I'm gonna go down to bind again, disconnect RF, bind. That's RF. Push. Ooh, that's right. I gotta push the button. So you guys see? Look, no flashy flash. Mm -hmm. You see how I'm holding the prop? This is not always a good idea, but I would rather stall out a motor so it's flashing now. Mm -hmm. So if you have to have your hand in a place like that, especially on a weaker plane like this, 
I would hold that. Bind failed. bind failed, why? Let's go back to bind again. Got it. So we have a dance and we have a dance. So that's one dance. That means the AS3X is active and the auto configuration is going for the rest of the telemetry data and it wakes up. Okay, so as you can see, everything is technically working right now. If you wanna come around here and just look with me. Oh, that's so annoying. I think it's got something to do with the linkage, tipping it. So I'm gonna try to center these things. I hope it's not like that much heavier on that side. That would be very weird. Be okay, weird. so real quick, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. That's obviously the takeoff and landing flaps and it's not working yet, so not to be surprised. Roll left, roll right, obviously that's incorrect too, but watch this. Servo setup, travel, reverse. Okay, so we went to, it was aux two, so it was channel one, two, three, four, five, six, so it'd been left aileron. Now look, roll right, roll left, take off flaps, landing flaps. Wow, so it's already you, set up. You said left and right backwards, so well, do it again. Okay. When you did roll left. So I'm in neutral on my flaps now. Roll left, roll right. Okay. So that would be takeoff. That would be normal flight. That'd be takeoff and landing. So obviously we have some work to do there, but no problem. So I'll just put it in neutral so they're sitting still. Now that we have the behavior we expect, we also need to look for uh, AS3X and safe. So in order to do that, I have to move the plane around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this strapped in. We've noticed that the prop is not spinning. So real quick test, I'm gonna hold that battery so it doesn't move. Throttle cut is currently on. I'm gonna give throttle, nothing happens. I can trust the throttle cut. So I'm gonna slide this forward. I'm gonna shut off throttle cut and I'm gonna move the throttle forward. Obviously that's working. Throttle cuts on and tested. So now I can trust not only the directions of my travel, but I can, I can trust the throttle cut. So I'm gonna get this Velcro pulled back. You're probably thinking to yourself, there's a lot of stuff you're saying that I don't understand. It's okay if you don't understand 100% of this. If you're brand new to the hobby, there's a lot that you um, might hear in this video that's gonna be more than you need. So maybe even just watching the original one might be easier. But I just wanna make sure that I help some people set up flap runs that might need some help. And I wanna help some people that uh, just don't know how to do this. Okay, so you see these two straps? Those two strap halves? This one's really long, so you just kind of hold it tight and then put that under. And you can flip this over on itself, see how it doesn't stay, because you gotta do a, a 90 degree fold and then it'll stick to itself, okay? And yes, you would normally feed it through the opening and slide it through, but there's just not enough room in this particular plane. Grab me the canopy there, camera crew, please. Okay, so this is gonna go in. It's gonna go in like that and then it's gonna snap, boom. Then the release pops it up. See how that works? Pretty easy stuff. All right, so there you have it. So like technically you could fly this plane right now, but it's like there's something not quite right about it. Here's the thing. Until you give throttle, it's not gonna activate yes, AS3X. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this. Over 25%, throttle cuts now on. You also notice braking. See how it stops? I'm having to force this around. It won't idle. That's braking. So it comes out of the box set for you. Okay, so then that'll fold when it's flying through the air. So pretty sweet there. Now, let's talk about AS3X and safe. I'm gonna look at the elevator, it's going up, it's going down, rudder's going right, rudder's going left, or whatever I'm seeing, and then aileron up, aileron down, aileron up, aileron down, it's not working, okay? So let's talk about that. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Camera crew's gonna give me the camera. Okay, so I'm looking at the elevator. As I pull this plane up, that, that elevator should go up to correct. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Okay, so now we're gonna try on the rudder axis. Rudder, rudder. You see how it goes that way? See how it goes that way? It's resisting whatever I'm doing with my body holding it, okay? Now, because it's hard to see, I don't expect you to be able to see it, but just take your hand if you can't see. Roll the plane up, oh yeah, it went up. It went down. Now, take your other hand, put it over here. Roll it up, roll it down. There is no movement, okay? Why is that? I'm gonna tell you why because we don't have AS3X and SAFE active on this channel, okay? So the trade-off is this is where you could just have flapperons, 
But the trade-off is you only have AS3X active on this, but not this, okay? So you don't wanna get too deep into the setup because it's not gonna matter for a bit because we're gonna have to reset this anyway, okay? But you could stop right here and you could set it up and say, I want spoilers or I want flaperons, okay? Because you still technically get that behavior. So let's go back into the flap system and just show you how you would do it. So now you would just go in here and change your 50 to like more, more like 100, still works, okay? Or take off flaps. So let's go 50, you see what I'm doing? I'm at minus 50. That's actually needs to be neutral. So I'm gonna actually end up having to highlight that and go the other way. Cause I want these parked in the normal, like normal spot. So I'm gonna just clear it to zero. And then this one is gonna be my landing flaps. See what I'm doing here? So that'd be landing flaps, okay? So still operates, take off flaps, still operates, and still operates as ailerons. Okay, now you could also set up differential, which is where, in terms of a positive number, this one would go up all the way while this one doesn't move. And then this one would go up all the way and this one doesn't move. So that's differential. Now, if you did a negative value, when you're rolling this way, okay, the one that goes up would not move up at all and the one that goes down would move all at once, okay? So I can demonstrate that real quick just so you know how it works before we do anything more. I would not use differential. I'm gonna turn it on, I'll set it to switch C. Okay, so switch C, like watch this. I'll set 100 and I'll set minus 100. So this will help you understand what I'm saying. Differential is, is kind of a different thing. So come over here so you can see. All right, so right now we're in this setting, so we're at plus 100. See, that one goes up, that one goes up, nothing happens. Now in neutral, they work opposite of each other, so you're using both wings. And then in this mode, that one goes down, that one goes down. So it depends on the type of wing and also depends on the application, how you want the efficiency of the wing to operate. In this case, I'm gonna inhibit that feature because I don't need it. Very easy to set up though. You could also make it so it's just on instead of attached to a switch. You can just have it on like in differential, instead of being attached to a switch, you can just set it to be like, I just want it to be like 30%. So when I go this way, this one goes up roughly 30% more than that. This one goes up roughly 30% more than that. So the idea is the speed of the uh, volume of air going across the wing is higher here and it's lower here. So you have more efficiency on the upward swing than you do on the lower swing. Okay, so when you go up like this and it's gonna roll the plane to the right, then it's basically going to be impacting more change with this one because it's more efficient and less on this one because it's less efficient. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn that back off. You just stay where you are there, you'll be fine. Okay, all right, so now it's inhibited. All right, so we've talked about a lot of things so far. We're gonna verify control surfaces, going yawing to the left, yawing to the right, elevator up, elevator down, roll to the left, roll to the right. Everything seems fine, except it does seem like maybe this throw is not exactly even, but it's pretty dang close, okay? Now, it also looks like this one's slightly up from this one. That can be corrected mechanically or can be corrected with trim, but I would not mess with it until you fly this thing, okay? So you would correct it by doing this. You see how it's now lined up? You don't wanna waste your trim, okay? See how it's kind of lined up now with the root? And the root is perfect. Look at the trim. Now my trim's at minus 54, so I don't care. I'm gonna put that back to even. And believe me, it doesn't matter. Now there is another menu where you can do that in servo setup, travel, sub trim for the ailerons. But the key is what's gonna happen is you have a sweep on your aileron servo, okay? So let's say this is 100 and this is 100% plus and 100% minus, right? If you trim, you're gonna use up your percentage, okay? So that's why you mechanically trim your planes when possible. All right, so I want AS3X and safe on both controls. And to be honest with you, you could run this all day long and it would work fine. And you would have plenty of stabilization from one aileron and plenty of safe on there. But you're like, but Brian, you didn't set up safe. That's right. Because here's the thing, so check this out. Go over here, hey, see this? There's gear, we're not using gear for anything. So sticks, I think it's down and out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So nothing's happening. 
So that's, this has the newer firmware. So I can go into forward programming and see if it connects. Gyro settings, boom. Save select. Flight mode one, flight mode two. Nothing's changing, so we do have to use the flight mode. Now, the flight mode is just gonna allow you to switch between AS3X and SAFE. So there are some older instructions, and if you're using a DSMX receiver that doesn't have forward programming, you can and will need to go through the other binding procedure to turn on safe select versus not having safe select on. Like almost nobody is doing that these days because it's an older type of setup. But let's show you how it works. I'm just gonna turn that around so the prop is pointed away from me in case something would go crazy. Okay, so you'll notice it says flight mode two. Well, we never set up flight mode. So what we gotta do now, and I said that earlier, I said we might need to set this up. So I'm gonna disconnect our app. I'm gonna go to flight mode setup. I'm gonna go ahead and make an assignment for switch D. Okay, so that's gonna give me three flight modes, okay? Now, I could set up spoken flight modes. I'm not gonna do that today, uh, but maybe what I'll do is I'll set this to safe, or excuse me, this is gonna be AS3X, because that's what I want. The, this is just a label, guys. So AS3X, and this is just something you can type in. You could say stabilizer, whatever. Whatever makes you comfortable, because this is just me doing this, okay? And I'm not gonna set anything there. So I'm gonna set this to off, so cancel, cancel, clears it. So now I'm gonna type the word off. Now you probably can't even turn it off on this setup, um, but on a sailplane, it is nice to be able to do that, okay? So if you wanted to do the auto, oh, I guess we'll just set up the audio. Bands. We're going to have to redo all this though. Oh, right? that's right. We're going to have to redo this. So we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to make that silence. And then this one, same thing. I just happened. I just happened to go to silence, didn't I? Okay. Then this one cancel. There you go. See this one. I'm going to set to safe. Okay. So we're safe. Uh, whoops. Cancel, cancel. So this is the legacy keyboard too, just in case you guys were wondering, you don't have to use the legacy keyboard. Yours probably has like a scrolly full keyboard. Looks like a QWERTY keyboard. All right, so we have silence, silence and silence. Super easy to change that, but at least now we can also do, um, so we set that to switch D, right? Mm -hmm. So the flight mode setup is on switch D. Okay, but now we need to make the actual channel assignment. So let's go to, we can, we can set gear to switch D. You can also set that to flight mode. Okay. Cause we're already using aux one for the flaperons and then aux two is just shut off because I don't like B being attached to that. So now keep in mind, you can also use these upper channels if you want, like for the, for these, you can use those too, okay? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna set that to switch D, okay? Now if you go to next, see how it still says gear? You can also change that port assignment too, but I'm just gonna leave that normal. I think this should work. If it doesn't work, I'll help answer why. Okay, so now we can go back into forward programming, but before we do that, let's scroll over to uh, monitor and just watch what happens when we flip the switch. See, now that's impacting change on the gear channel, okay? And we still have our ailerons acting as flaperons, okay? So now I can go into flap system. If you wanted to make these spoilerons, you would just reverse this from minus 50 to plus 50 and from minus 100 to plus 100, okay? Just so you know. And then elevator correction is gonna be opposite. So I'm gonna do like 10, I'm gonna do like eight, okay? So this should go up, watch. Creeps up, creeps up, okay? So I'm gonna do, I think I remember is a lot. So let's do minus 10 and minus 16. Okay, very good. Everything's still working otherwise, cool. So now the other thing too is we have to go into forward programming now and validate our flight mode. So safe select channel, gear. You guys see that? So now in this mode, I want AS3X on, I want safe on, oh, I gotta reverse this now. Okay, so walk out of your menu, 
Go back to servo setup, travel, scroll over to reverse, and then just reverse, whoops, reverse gear. Ah, oh, dang it, I accidentally, I accidentally reversed that, guys. So I just had to reverse that. Now, when I go down to forward programming, gyro settings, save select. Okay, so it says gear. Flight mode two is AS3X on, AS3X on, AS3X on. Now that's gonna turn safe on, okay? So safe select on means that it is on in sort of a global sense, like the feature is turned on. But now safe is still on, even though it's turned off, if that makes sense. Very confusing, right? See how the mode, see how the mode's changing from one to two to three? You remember how I had to reverse things? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now watch what happens. So, how do you tell what's on? This is supposed to be AS3X, but it's probably safe. So it sticks down and over, same. There's your safe. How, did you, how do you know safe is on, Brian? Because the movement changed. Now also, I want you guys to pay attention to that one moving and this one moving, but that one not. You guys get it? Mm -hmm. See what's going on? So now also I wanna point out, look how much further that goes down. That's because it doesn't have AS3X and safe doing anything to it, which means you're not gonna be applying the AS3X stabilizer or the safe, which basically rides on the AS3X feature, okay? So, like I said, you could fly this right now without going through a full factory reset of the receiver and it would probably work fine um, because you don't need both of those things to be acting with AS3X or safe. But let's just show you what happens, okay? During safe, I'm in safe right now, this thing is gonna attempt to level the airplane automatically. So flip it on its belly. You see what's happening? Only one aileron is working to bring this to the quickest route to level or the quickest route. Now look at the elevator. Of course, the elevator is gonna be trying to pull the nose up or push the nose down to bring it to level, right? Mm -hmm. So now that you're level, the AS3X and safe look almost the same because there's AS3X and safe working right now. Hope you can hear that. Still on and still on, okay? No matter which switch condition I'm on. But once we factory reset this receiver, we can also add an off condition. Now, normally I wouldn't care about an off condition and I generally don't thermal gliders or sailplanes very much because it's just hard to film for an exciting video. But the truth is with the offsetting on, you can fly and watch the plane get kicked by a thermal. And that's one of the telltale signs that you're in a thermal. Now, the other thing that's a nice telltale sign is if you have a, a barometer which would give you access to a Vario. So the Vario will go boop, 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 or nothing if you're not changing at a rate of descent or ascent that's great enough to prompt an audio feedback. And you can also turn that on and off, which we've done on other planes, actually a lot of other planes. So if you wanna see that, we've done it on a number of other planes. But for now, because this is a bind and fly and we're trying to show how to actually do it right, we have to do one more thing. So let's see if we can do this from the front or from the forward programming. It'd be so nice if we could. Forward programming, gyro settings, save select. Yep, we don't have access to it, okay? Whoops. So we don't have access to the reset, okay? And it's because the firmware version's down here, 2.3707, okay? So the only way for you to actually formally set up AS3X and safe and have full functioning suite of controls, which means basically you're gonna gain like one little tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny feature, which is the whole other aileron, would be to actually hook this up to the computer and reset it and I'll show you how to do that. With this cable, this cable is, where did we put that thing, camera crew? Oh, okay. it's right here. This is the part number. Of course, we have links to this stuff. We'll link to it in the video if YouTube doesn't remove it. Okay, so this is the kit. I put it back in the bag, but that's the part number. So don't pause it. We'll put links to it, guys. And by the way, if you follow the links, you help support us financially. We get some small commissions from the companies we work with, and that's how we fund this channel. 
So if you watch these big long videos, just remember we've done like 1900 plus of these videos. So just imagine how much time it would take to produce all these videos. That's the small way you can help us and it is the best way you can help Brian Phillips RC, the family that sacrifices so much so that you guys can get up in the air. And don't get me wrong, I love this stuff, but my wife, not so much. She tolerates it. Kids, I mean, they love it, sort of. But the thing is, you gotta remember, we spend a lot of time on airplanes and stuff around here. All right, so we have the plug and we have this thing, okay? This thing goes into the USB-A port of your computer. This thing goes into the bind plug, which in this case is the bind slash programming plug, okay? So first things first, throttle cut is on. Make sure you get all your stuff out of the way. This is called the uh, TXRX USB programming cable. We will link to it so that you can buy one if you wanna help support Brian Phillips RC. Now keep in mind, this is where you're gonna blow out the factory programming for this receiver. And all we're doing is we're gonna set up instead a virgin factory receiver, okay? So then we'll show you exactly how to set that up. We're gonna pause and get the computer coming right back. All right, so if you're getting ready to actually reset, factory reset your receiver, on some of these planes, they're gonna come with new receivers. It may allow you in forward programming, just keep in mind. Don't do this step if you can do it through forward programming, because all we're doing is just resetting the factory defaults, okay? So you go to this bind plug, orange is gonna go up, brown is down, so just plug in there. Now keep in mind, this thing is gonna ask you a question if you've got it powered or not you can power this from the computer or you can power it from the flight pack, okay? It's gonna ask a question when you plug this in and you just wanna be careful that it doesn't try to start taking off on you. Um, so I'm gonna plug this in. Of course, I'm gonna have to plug it in the other way. Okay, so do, 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 do. It says power cable. I don't wanna power the cable right there, okay? So this is the Spectrum Programmer Beta. You can get this from Spectrum's website. Okay, so now I am going to go to, uh, let's see, we're gonna try to connect. Okay, so I wanna look on the underside of this real quick. There's no light on there. It's easier to tell if you're connected because if you have the thing off, but just as you guys can see, it's still technically working, okay? So I am going to software updates. We're gonna come right back. Okay, so if you get in here and you try to click connect and it doesn't connect, I'm just, I'm gonna unplug this and it says no device connected. So I can tell that the USB driver is finding something. I just don't know why it won't connect here. So if that doesn't connect, I think I have to add a new receiver. Okay, so we can try to import too. Let's see if it'll let us import. Okay, so that's not what we want. So I'm gonna click add new this time and I'm gonna choose what type of receiver. So this is 637 TA. Oh, dang it. Is this a touch screen? Yes. So if you have a touch screen, don't do that. Okay, so there we go. So choose image, I don't care. I'm just gonna call this the Concendo Con. Shendo, Evo, Flapperons, Flapperons. Uh, and I'm gonna say Concendo Evo 1.5 meter, just to designate in case there'd ever be a bigger one. And the camera crew is gonna move her body so she can get a better angle for you. Okay, so we're gonna try this and see if it, it opens. So it started this. So now I don't know if it's gonna let me connect now or not. Okay, so connect, edit, more, export, duplicate, reset. Are you sure you wanna reset all of this model settings? I guess. But see, I can't tell if it's actually connected yet. I don't think it is. Okay, so if I go to edit, yeah, there's not really anything special there. So I doubt it's changed anything. So what we need to do is we need to come right back. Okay, so I technically clicked the resets and I just wanna see what happens if I go to forward programming. I don't think it's gonna matter because I don't think we actually reset the thing, okay? Yeah, see, it still says gyro settings. It still says, okay, so it's not been reset and we obviously haven't updated the firmware or anything, okay? So then we're just gonna keep digging and come right back. Okay, so I'm just gonna do another thing here too. I've done this before when doing these 
firmware updates. I'm gonna unplug the battery. And then you'd think, well, that's gonna, that's gonna stop it from working. Not necessarily, it depends on the model. Okay, so I've unplugged it. Now there's no lights on the receiver. Just take my word for it or the camera crew will actually maybe show you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go connect and see if it connects. It shouldn't because I haven't checked the power box. Power cable, power cable. Okay, so now watch. It's initiating. See it's moving? Okay, so we're obviously working. So now I can actually do this. Do you guys see what happened? I was using the, the flight pack, it was not happy with that. So now that I've disconnected the power from the battery, I go to power cable. I'm also getting annoying warnings, so don't worry about that. We don't need to worry about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the device settings for now. No, I'm gonna use the computer settings because I wanna reset it, right? Mm -hmm. So now look, it just reset everything, okay? So now when I click, it may give us a low voltage warning. If so, I'll switch to the battery. Watch this. Come on, you can do it. Nope, it still looks like it's back to that. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna change this. I wanna go to edit. Now that we're connected, we're definitely connected now. De definitely connected. I wanna go to more and I wanna go to delete, no, reset. Boom, yes. Oh wait, did it, it went to this, it went to model one, whoops. So I wanna go more and then I wanna reset it here. Yes, so I really don't care about the model name. That it means nothing to me. So if we go to edit, looks like this is, this is the one we must be connected to because it's dark, right? But then it says this device and there's two of them. What the heck? I'm gonna select this. Oh, it changed the tone of the receiver stuff. Okay, so things, things are moving. It's rebooting, good. All right, so now that should be reset. So I'm gonna go into forward programming. Takes a second, by the way, this is normal. Gyro settings, okay, so that's bad. So we still have movement and it's not quite enough juice to keep it alive so it's rebooting, okay? So what I might have to do is I'm gonna go in here, I'm on this one now. Use device, use computer settings. That's supposed to reset it. More, I'm just gonna try it again and reset it here. Yes, I am. Edit, yeah, that all looks correct. So we'll save that. Now, we have movement, we have movement. Okay, so we have movement. Everything is working technically. I'm not gonna run the motor, obviously. Um, but the thing is, I don't know if the AS3X and SAFE are set up. And so when I click and I scroll down to forward programming, it's probably gonna show, if you reset the factory defaults, the factory defaults, this is a bind and fly model. So what I need to do is I almost need to go in here and go to edit and change this to, a, I wonder if I have to just change it to a T receiver. Save, more, reset, yes. Let's see if it does. Well, it doesn't look like it did anything though. Mm -mm. So let's select this and see what happens. Now let's select back to this. Nope, it still says TA. You remember how I tried to edit it? It didn't let me edit it. So more export. Hmm. Hmm. No, I don't want to do that. I don't care about that. More export. Re okay, so I need to see if I can figure out how to update the firmware. Guys, I, I totally forgot about the software update. So this one's the one I wanna use. I'm gonna go to software update and it shows this stuff. And yeah, so it shows the 2.37, which you can see when you connect in here, 2.3707, okay? So you can choose the file. So we're gonna, you need to log into the spectrum.com and register the device. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come right back. Okay guys, I'm just gonna stop for a second and talk. I wish I could show you the entire registration process, but it's got like all of my personal information on it. So I can't just show you the registration process. So you have to go to spectrumrc.com, log in, then you have to click in the upper right hand corner, they've got like a little silhouette shape, you click on that, then it takes you to Spectrum, 
uh, the my spectrum stuff, which is like your items. So like I got the DX18, I got NX8s, got NX6s, all that stuff, bunch of receivers, and then you have to register the item. I, I can't show it. There's too many personal identifying informations on it, unfortunately. So now that I've registered it, now I'm gonna check for updates and see if this works. Now it's gonna look and it's gonna find. And look, update, install. See, 2.46. So all of a sudden, you can do that. So now, update, whatever. Okay, now, if you just zoom out, this stopped buzzing. So it's in the process of updating. And I just wanna remind you guys, all this was for one aileron to function for safe and ASTRX. Right. I, I just want you guys to understand, but it's also gonna give you, a, it's gonna unlock the full potential of that receiver, I think, okay? Okay, so the progress is done. It says the device was successfully uploaded, or updated rather. You can hit okay. Now it's gonna, it's syncing. So I'm just gonna go, this model, the, mo the model settings on this device do not match those on the computer. Which would you like to use? This, whatever, it doesn't matter. Use computer settings. Okay. All right, good. Okay, so now we can go back to models and all of a sudden, look at this. Now, watch this, guys. So the connection failed, that's normal. I'm gonna go back into Ford programming. Booyah with advanced menus on, yeah, buddy. So now we might be able to actually change things without totally factory reset, booyah, apply, complete, okay? So once you updated the firmware. Yep, you okay. can do a factory reset. So yes, that's a huge, gigantic pain in the butt, but okay, so we should have full movement of everything. Okay, throttle cuts on. I am gonna go ahead and unpower the cable, which is gonna disconnect. Disconnect from the computer, close my computer, put this away. Yeah, that's a lot of screwing around, guys. And the reason I want to show you the fact that there's a lot of screwing around is because you may be thinking to yourself, no big deal, and you're probably gonna send me a comment like, hey, hey, can you just tell me what to do? No. Just watch that. Just watch that. And I still didn't show the whole process because I had to update the firmware or I had to connect to my our, uh, my Spectrum account. And the problem is we do it like once a year. We do this, so we do this as problem. infrequently as humanly possible. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you something guys, just because it works doesn't mean it works well. And here's the big ticket item. The new planes coming with the AR637TA are coming with the advanced menus, which gives you the opportunity to reset it in 10 seconds. Right. So this will become obsolete at some point. This step will eventually become obsolete, but you gotta remember, you got a lot of other receivers, and so you might need one of these yeah. uh, to get it done. And just keep in mind, that's for your older models are still gonna need that, okay? So it's a pain, but it's just kind of the way it is. All right, so now that we have that done, we at least know that we can go ahead and close this up because we are technically done inside of here. Okay, so I can fold this cable. We obviously have additional channel that's being unused on channel five now because we can do our control channels on the top end. Since we have an NX10, if you use an IX20 or something like that, you should be able to get away with it. You know, if you were on the other side, you'd be able to see all of it without looking through my hand. Okay, so now we have to go in here and treat it like an untested machine because it is, it's been reset. Okay, now uh, throttle cut is on. I trust it enough to start it. So I'm gonna start it, but we just wanna be careful at this point. If something changed, this would be when it would surprise you. Okay, you notice there was no dance, none. Right. And that's so annoying, it keeps falling over like that. Okay, so first thing I have to do is I have to see if my controls are working in the right direction. This plane stand usually works really helpfully but today, for whatever reason, it's just been super annoying. Okay, roll, yeah. Oh, there it goes. Roll left, roll right. Obviously, that's not working. It didn't initiate yet. That's fine. That's why it didn't jump. It didn't snap to life. Now, throttle cut is already turned on, so this should not work. Throttle sticks up. Throttle cut is now off. As you can see, it does work. Still braking, throttle cut's on, tested. Now I can trust 
the most dangerous part of this bottle, the throttle, okay? Why does it tip so much? It's like freaking annoying. I hope it's not like an imbalance issue because that would drive me nuts if it was that big of a deal. Is it? Just listen. No AS3X, no safe, which means now we have to get our control direction set up again. I don't know, is it like heavy over there? It's really frustrating though. Is it possible that the wave star isn't centered? No, I, I hope not. I hope not. That would be highly unusual. There's no way it's that big of a deal though. Okay, all right. So let's look at this guys. We have to now make a bunch of these settings changes that we already did. Elevator up, good. Elevator down, good. Y'all left, good. Y'all right, good. Not good. So we have to go back into servo setup because remember we reset everything. We're just gonna do reverse. We'll just take that one. Id correct. We're gonna reverse the other one now. Correct, correct. That's gonna roll the plane this way. That's gonna roll the plane that way. Take off flaps, landing flaps, roll, roll. Okay, so everything is working in the correct direction. Now we have to go through forward programming and we have to start from a virgin setup, okay? So first time setup, make sure blah, 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 everything is set, blah, 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 set at level, hit continue. Set this model on its nose and that's how it's gonna figure out how the uh, model is actually, uh, the receiver's installed. I'm gonna lay it like that and then just hit continue. Oh, look at that, that looks about right. Then continue. Now I'm gonna lay this back down because it can be laid back so it can tip and drive me crazy again. And I'm just gonna win the battle by putting that there. Okay guys, if you're paying attention, the camera crew is gonna get in position. So gain channel is set. Now I can use the right knob. So all I have to do is pick the right, right knob, which is on supposedly channel three. So that sounds about right. There it is. And now I can apply that. Now listen, dance, one dance, not two, but one. We don't have safe activated yet. We just have the S3X. Now I can go back into forward programming, gyro settings, flight mode setup, See, it's not changing because it doesn't know what channel it is. So that's D and D is on the gear switch is the way we set it up, okay? Now you could use one of the upper channels if you want, if you have an NX-10, and you could keep gear open for like something else, like a bomb drop or whatever. Okay, so now it says three. There you go, so there you go. So now AS3X is active, active, nope, now it's inhibited, and now it's active. Okay, so now watch this. The other thing I wanna do as you remember, I'm gonna go to system setup. What was I gonna do? I wanted to set up the audio events now. So now we can go to F mode setup. See, it's on switch D. So now, silence. Let's change this. We're gonna set it to AS3X. It's way down here, so we'll come right back. Okay, so we're coming back. Should be getting pretty close. Let me know if I overshoot here, cam crew. They're safe. There's the AS3X. AS3X okay, so now we're gonna set this to off, which is like halfway down. So leave off. off. AS3X mode off. Okay, and then we'll set this to safe, which is way down at the bottom again. Safe. safe mode off. AS3X okay, so now remember, those are just labels, but they will show up on the main screen, which is really handy. Okay, so now we just need to make sure that's true as we go through our forward programming and we set up the rest of this stuff. First time safe setup. This is already set. As you can see, we've acknowledged it and we'll continue now. I want safe down here. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure my plane is level. This is where it actually matters if it's level, okay? So this is where the plane stand would normally be handy and it would not be a problem at all, but this one for whatever reason being a real pain in the neck. So it looks pretty level to me. So I'm gonna level model and capture attitude. Watch this. Those numbers can be manually adjusted if you'd like based on this direction, okay? Okay, so now I'm in flight mode one. Safe is now going to be self-level and angle demand. 
I'm gonna set pitch down. I'm gonna do like, I'm just gonna let us go like way down. And I'm gonna let us go way up because I don't care. Okay, I'm not gonna really use it much anyway, but then that gives you a lot of angles so you don't get trapped in corners as easy. Oh. Then it's, we don't care because this isn't, this isn't even being called out here. See, it's off. And it's still off, so we don't really care about those settings. Okay, so then we can go next. Now, now watch, apply, watch the dance. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. What? They dance the same direction. I hope it's set up right. Oh, it is set up right. Okay, we're fine. But did you notice the way it danced? It danced the same direction. It should go, but it doesn't matter. I did change that, but just keep in mind, if you notice that, double check your work. Double check, it. double check your work. We're gonna double check it, triple check it. Okay, so now forward programming, we're going back into gyro settings, AS3X settings. I'm gonna change this from one to four, okay? Now this is my gain setting. So I'm gonna take off my forceps, excuse me. Okay, so pay attention and listen. You'll be able to hear it now. I might have to cut off the throttle cut. It's not gonna work. Past the 25%, throttle cut's back on. In forward programming, your throttle cut's automatic, okay? All the way up, all the way off. Elevator, up, down. Yaw, yaw, up, down, up, down. Camera crew. Gain is all the way up in 4X, meaning the knob is turned all the way to the up position. Now look at this. Up, down. You can see this time, right? Up, down. Watch the elevator. Up, down. Rudder, left, right. Left, right. You can see how it's resisting impact. Now watch this. You can really see it there. Yeah. Okay, so this is critical, because watch. Off. There's AS3X only. Gains are all the way up. All the way down, all the way up, halfway, 25%, zero, okay? Now, because we're probably not gonna need 4X, that's too much gain, I'm gonna just set four to like one, okay? Now, we're gonna go and listen again. I like all the way off, all the way on, off. AS3X and safe. Now watch this, now we're gonna test safe. Look, ah, now watch the elevator. Quickest route to level, look at the elevator, it's pointed up. Look at the elevator, it's pointed down. Now, because we have flap runs, you must test one more mode. Take off flaps. Watch the direction of travel. I'm gonna put it back to four X, just so you can see it really good. That's gonna go up, 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 down. Watch this one, up, down. Okay, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right, AS3X, yep, everything's working the correct direction. And when I go to landing flaps, up, down, up, down, up, down, left, right. Do you guys see what I just did there? I checked all my work. Now I'm setting my 4X back to 1X. Camera crew, they're gonna need to see this. So you're gonna have to set that back to one X or you're gonna have way too much gain, okay? Now, the other thing is, God, that's annoying that that keeps flipping over. That is so frustrating. Fixed adjustable. See, they're all adjustable. They're all off. They're all adjustable, okay? So everything is currently working. Clear the timer, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll, roll right. Now I wanna show you one other trick. Camera crew, you made me think about that stupid rod in there if it's not pushed all the way through, but I don't know how it would've, I would've had to push so hard to get it through there wrong. So look at this now, guys. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right, everything's working. Stick down and over, watch this. On for AS or X, off for AS or X, Safe, okay, safe mode. 
Okay, so now we opened up the flight envelope in auto leveling. So now I'm gonna show you with auto leveling on, see the elevator all the way up? That's where it's gonna stop you. Like bare, it's gonna go like almost vertical. Mm -hmm. And then watch this. Now stick down. See it down, 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 down to like there. Goodness gracious, awesome. Now roll. See the ailerons? It's gonna stop you there. And the other way, it's gonna stop you there, okay? So in safe, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. And then of course the yaw axis is not really uh, managed and safe, but there is heading hold, which is a totally different thing. All right, so we have done all the things that you need to done. It's an AS3X now and it's ready to fly, except for the CG. We have not marked the CG. Now, I'm gonna tell you one thing is, admittedly, I am not gonna mark the CG on this plane. And you're like, are you serious? We always mark the CG, Brian. I'm gonna show you how I would mark it if I was marking it. I would get a tool, like forceps, out of the drawer. Okay? Calipers. Calipers, rather. Not forceps, sorry. And then I would measure the 67 to 71 or whatever it happens to be. And I would take and mark it. And then I would mark the other one. Boom. And I would do that on both sides. And then I would check. But you want to know, you know what? We're so close to doing it. Why don't we just do it? We're going to run out of time, guys. If you want to help support Brian Phillips RC, all you have to do is look no further than the links in the video description below. Buy the planes from the links. The best way to support us financially and also gives us a nice boost in our morale because these videos do get tedious and lengthy. Because remember, we're filming them. Do you have the numbers? 57 50, to 71. 57 to 71. Camera crew is concerned we're gonna lose memory. Okay, so what is it, 57 to 71? Yep. So 57 millimeters. Okay, so there's 57. I'm gonna go where I can see the dot, boom. And then I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna have to lift this up just a little bit. And there's the dot, now to 71. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we're gonna be right in the middle of that thing, aren't we? So here's 71. So if I was marking this, that's where I would go, okay? So then I would take my marker and I would just highlight that opening so I can easily and quickly find it. Now, why do I not care on this model? Explain to the people, camera crew. They can't hear me. Oh, the reason we wouldn't do it is because you can only get the battery in there just wherever it goes, because there's no room. Doesn't really matter. It's not that it doesn't matter, it's that we've already established that it works. If you were building a, you know, stick built model, okay, so this is a 1300 3S, it's tail heavy, not a surprise, and then it balances out okay, actually, on the back hole. So it's gonna be tend to be tail heavy with a 13, 1300 3S, but that's not what people are gonna generally use. Um, they're gonna, they're gonna, t okay, so I wanna just do a test. See how it's leaning that direction? It should, does it lean the same direction? Yes, it does. So that makes me wonder if the camera crew is somehow correct on the way that spar got in there. I just don't understand how that would work. Is there something else that would cause it to be heavier on that side than the other side? Turn it around and see if the nose going that way does the same thing. It should go, that That's what I just did. I literally just did that test. Yeah, that was why I turned it towards you. Um, okay, so I guess it is what it is. I'm not sure if it's something with the plane stand or something with the plane, but I'm gonna tell you this, it's annoying. So I'm hoping it doesn't give us any issues when we fly. And if it does, that means this wing is too heavy compared to this wing, or it's mounted and there's some asymmetry to it and we'd have to actually add weight to balance it. I have never had to do that on a model. Like ever, ever. Okay, so let's see how bad it looks with the 4S in there. So 4S 2200, which is what most people are gonna wanna fly on this plane. We'll just plop that in there real quick. See, even empty, it wants to favor that direction, which it's gotta be something to do with the way this stand is holding it. It's so annoying though. Okay, we're gonna pause and come right back. Okay, so I cleaned those pads and it's sort of helped a little bit. <laughs> okay, show the people loading this real quick. We got the battery here. Can you reach? No, you gotta go this way, okay? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna mount this in here and there is enough room to get this, but I'm not actually gonna hook it. 
And then I'm just gonna show you this for center of gravity testing reasons, okay? Because we're not getting ready to fly just quite yet. So it's dark out. Okay, so the center of the two points, a little bit nose heavy. On the front hole, we're pretty much perfect. On the back hole, we're pretty nose heavy. That being said, this plane is a cruiser and it's gonna be fast and it's gonna act almost like a, a, like a warm liner or a hot liner. If you guys don't know what a hot liner is, it's a fast sailplane. So there you have it guys. 4S uh, is very powerful and it's gonna be crazy. And you've seen it all here on Brian Phillips RC before. It's not the first time or last time you're gonna see a radio setup. An unbox build radio setup on the other channels is gonna look something like this. Wow, look, it's pretty, okay. I put the wings on and I ran into a problem with the screw. Okay, great. Ours is gonna show us running into the problem with the screw, which means it's a longer video and it takes more time for us to film. But at the end of the day, we know that some of you just need help. And that's why we're here is we're gonna help you go from box to air and get it done right. We're gonna teach you how to do it because even though there are certain things we can't share because I literally have my entire address and serial numbers and you know private information that I can't share on my spectrum, Dot com, everything else we try to share. So I apologize, that's just one thing we can't do here. But what I am gonna tell you is this plane is amazing and I hope you already have one or you're gonna get one from the links in the video description below. And if you want something that's even easier to set up, meaning you just pull it out of the box and do it, this thing is a second to none. And look at that beauty. It is just amazing. It is so much fun that we have access to such good sailplanes practically out of the box. And I'm glad I didn't knock that over on the ground. But guys, like I said, the best way you can help us is by buying planes, getting in the air and enjoying this hobby with us, not in spite of us, but with us. Not because you're annoyed with Brian Phillips RC for long videos, but because you're in the air now. And we hope that you guys understand that. Um, we are desperately trying to get people to take this stuff seriously. Don't just download the bind, and fly, uh, the bind and Fly profiles. That's a waste of time. Uh, yeah, I know you just watched a three hour video. I get it, I understand, the, I understand the irony in that. But the truth is you need to learn how to use these tools so that you can make the most of these expensive tools. Because once you capitalize on the expensive tools, you can be a better pilot. And um, it's gonna help you a lot. And I'm not just saying that, I have been doing it, I have been living it for almost a decade now, and I'm about nine years into this, I mean, the camera crew doing this. And we love it, and we have hundreds and hundreds, we have very few planes up here right now because we have been moving them downstairs and we're soon to get more storage for those, um, which is yet to happen, but it's, it's happening in the next few weeks. So that being said, guys, awesome plane, good job, Concendo Evo is a great option. We'll link to that. We'll link to the batteries that we recommend, which is gonna be the 2200 3S, 2200s 4S. My suggestion, if you're brand new, start with the 2200 uh, 3S because you're gonna get the center of gravity good and you're not gonna have to fight it. You just put it in and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, we'll go ahead and link to the transmitters. And then if you want some of the tools that we were using, like the forceps, we linked to just something generically, uh, generically plane stand. This plane stand normally works a little better. I don't know what the deal was. It's better, I mean, it's better after we cleaned it. Yeah. Well, it's because it's just kind of get dirty on the surface. That, yeah, not as sticky. So with time, you'll get that. But also 1300 3S was not a terrible option for this plane, but you got to really bring that all the way forward if you want to try to get the CG to work well, okay? Tail heavy planes fly once, especially if you're inexperienced. Nose heavy planes fly fast. I, I don't know, they fly stable. And that's not really true on a sailplane. You might want it to be a little bit tail heavy if you're trying to thermal, because you'll see more of like a kick effect. And that's why we set up the off mode, okay? Because then you can see it going into a thermal and get kicked like this. And then once you get into the thermal, then you can ride that thermal and get that free altitude from mother nature. So guys, that's why you're here is because we're gonna try to teach you something where the other guys are just gonna try to sell you something. They're, we're gonna try to sell you something too. But at the end of the day, the reason we do that is because it does fund this whole apparatus that we call Brian Phillips RC. If you find something that you like in the background and you're like, hey, what is that thing? Just check it out on brianphillipsrc.com. That's our website. And you can search by Horizon or you can search by you know brand affiliates that we work with, or you can search by type. So of course, this would be a sailplane, or you could search by uh, eFlight or Horizon. Either way, e you'll be able to find it. But the other thing too is on YouTube, if you're just trying to find us on YouTube, exactly what you wanna find, you saw something here, just go to the playlist. It's the best way to find stuff. Everything we do is in a playlist. 
even if it's an individual video. Generally, there's gonna be an unbox build radio setup and then a flight normally, okay? We have gone a couple of different ways in the way we've done our videos over the years though, because there's so many of them, it is quite hard to find if you're not using a search apparatus though, okay? So just so you know, there it goes again. So that all being understood, we're very glad to have you here with us. Uh, special thanks to our Patreons. If you wanna become one, all you have to do is link in the links in the video description below, also available from brianfoldsrc.com. We also have uh, members on YouTube if you wanna become one. Special thanks to you if you already are one. I think we're up to like 70 or so supporters between the two platforms. And uh, it, it's small, but helpful. And at the end of the day, guys, the best thing you can do is buy the awesome stuff you want um, and you know, save a few bucks and just buy that plane you want because then we make the small commissions from them then nobody else will pay for it if you hear what I'm saying. Um, but if you, if you just wanna throw us a super thanks, we got those two and we always appreciate them and special high five for that. Um, what's the other way? PayPal. PayPal. If you wanna just do straight up cash money donations, uh, again, these, these are four bigging sites. I, I, I said for like seven and a half, almost seven years, I don't wanna start a begging site on Patreon. I still don't want to, but the truth is, for years we had hundreds, if not thousands of people asking, hey, how can we support you? I don't wanna buy a plane right now. My wife has threatened to murder me. So is there a way I can support you in my off months? I said, fine, yeah, we'll finally do it. My wife talked me into it, and uh, I'm glad we did because that has opened up some communication with people. As we've grown, it's gotten harder to keep up with comments, and so Patreon is a good way to do that because you have a different communication method, and I do see those and do respond pretty quick. And those of you that are patrons can chime in if you want in the comments down below. For the rest of you, if you're just commenting, we do try to reply to comments. Most of them we end up reading ourselves, and then most of them will reply. Either myself or Megan will reply, and it's just gonna look like me, but it's us, okay? And that's the thing you guys may not know, but there is somebody behind the scenes, meaning my wife, and wonderful camera crew of many, many years, my wife, and camera crew of just a few. <laughs> Hopefully we can keep her around for a few more years and she doesn't end up burying me in the backyard when they dig this pond a little deeper. But that being said, she's here working feverishly all the time when she'd like to be doing other things, I promise you. Mm -hmm. But see, I love this stuff. Like I would do it for free, she won't. <laughs> so that being said, now you know the full truth. Nothing but the truth. So help us God on Brian Phillips RC. That's what we do. We just tell you how you can support us because if you're here to support us, we're here to support you and we want it to be a mutually, gratific mutually gratifying relationship. And it has been for years and it'll continue to be so long as YouTube doesn't shut down our links, which they tried to and then they reneged on some of that and then immediately blocked new links. So we don't know what the heck is going on. They'll figure it out someday and never admit to any wrongdoing because then they'd be financially culpable. So that's the way it is. If you can't find something, go Brian ahead. Phillips RC. Yes. It's Brian with an I, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, RC. That's our website, okay? It's not hard to remember. It's not supposed to be tricky and we never mean to trick you guys. So even though YouTube thinks you're too stupid to realize that you're helping to support us by following links, we understand that you're smart enough to understand that when you follow the links, these guys know that you came from our video and so they'll send us a few bucks if you make a purchase. And you should tell them there's less links in the description. That's part of... There's less links. That's one of the accommodations that we're working on. So if you're having trouble finding stuff, it, you can thank YouTube. Yeah. So ask the question. Ask the question. Questions, it's easier for us to respond yeah. to or go to Brian Phillips right. RC. Brian Phillips RC. Or become a Patreon and then you'll have quicker access to us. But anyway, guys, uh, that's, that's all we got for you tonight. Hopefully we answered all your questions. Everybody thinks it's easy to add flap rounds. It is not. Now you know. All you had to do to put flaps on this is open it, set it up, bind and fly, which would take you five minutes. Cut this, cut a hole, mount a servo, or cut a hole and mount a servo here, and then use one of those free channels. Turn on a new flap channel, which does not impact AS3X and safe, and then you're golden. Set it up like any other plane you've ever set up. Inboard flaps would need an opposite correction. You'd be going down on the elevator and you'd be set. And by the way, it would work better. But still, I know a lot of you guys are clamoring to see the flap rounds and if they work, and we will reverse those to spoiler rounds probably in the video so you can see which one you like better. My guess is probably spoiler rounds are gonna be a cool detail, but I did not set up a mix to rotate them from flap rounds to spoiler rounds because I just always find whichever one works better and I just go with it. Mm -hmm. This just becomes a waste of time to have that complicated mix. 
All right, guys, that's all you get for tonight. Thanks for watching here on Brian Phillips RC. We got so much more RC content coming. And if you're looking for something to watch right here, right now, and you didn't get enough of it already, there's links that are popping up. And these are the playlists we were talking about. So thanks for watching, guys. So much more to come on Brian Phillips RC.